Well, let me tell you about Black Jim. Yeah, African-American, huge guy. Yeah, his petite Japanese wife. She had to go in hiding with friends and cabman do to protect herself. Black Jim, he's convinced he's picked up radiation poisoning from his Japanese wife from the uh, uh, nuclear explosion in Hiroshima. Uh, but thankfully, he is the living Buddha, so it can't really poison him. Yeah. Well, this time myself, me, I've been grooving around Kathmandu. I'm 22 years old, and uh, honestly, my reaction to Black Jim, absolute avoidance. <laughs> yeah. In fact, the whole hippie community here avoids Black Jim like the plague. Everybody stays out of his way. Except... Eddie. Yeah. Oh, here comes somebody freaking the Link Kazar, uh, warning everybody. Black Jim, he's coming to town. He's talking to himself. He's got a big stick. Uh, oh, here he comes. Black Jim comes upstairs in the Link Kazar. He looks around. What are all these sorry fuckers doing here? And these bitches? Maybe I should. Eddie says, sit down, Jim. Save yourself for greater things. Uh, oh, here comes Tibetan Joe. Uh, Mr. Eddie, uh, there's an American embassy car uh, waiting for you and Jim. Downstairs? Yeah. Well, what's happening is like, the, all the embassies in Kathmandu, they're besieged by... Uh, flipped out people from their home countries and they realize the diplomatic corps does that Eddie is like their final refuge uh, last resort for their most extreme cases and Black Jim <laughs> he's the worst so uh, Eddie's he's like a wild animal tamer yeah Circus of freaks up in Kathmandu. Eddie and Jim are silently chauffeured to the American embassy, where the vice consul magnanimously offers Jim an American hamburger. We're talking American mustard, ketchup, pickle relish. Black Jim says, just as I thought, cyanide. Uh, Eddie says, calm down, Jim. You know you're the living Buddha. Cyanide cannot harm you. <sighs> oh, wow. Uh, well, the vice consul explains uh, to Eddie that, look, um, Jim wants to be repatriated to the United States, but uh, not going into detail, he already owes the American embassy $7,000. Um we beseech you, please fly on the military transport with Black Jim back to the United States because uh, you're the only one he seems to trust. Yeah. Of course, you'll be flown right back here. Oh, Eddie, you know. Eddie. <laughs> Demures. I'd rather not. Mm hmm. Well, uh, Eddie is now 100% uh, sure that uh, the American embassy people don't want him for old drug warrants out of Denmark. And remember just three years ago how afraid he was to go into the American embassy to renew his passport in New Delhi? And now he's like their go-to guy at the embassy. So whew, that phantom, totally gone, vanquished. Well, Eddie steps out of the cabin after a night of his lifeful dancing. And, oh, no, there's Carl sitting under a cold, running, cold water faucet. Carl, get out of there. You'll get sick, Eddie. Eddie, I'm going to kill you. Well, he gets arrested, Carl, for throwing stones at passersby. 
and uh, it's in the police station, and he goes to visit him, and Carl is absolutely comatose, not even blinking. He's been like this for two days. Mm. Eddie assesses the sad reality. Police agree. He must be sent home to Germany. German embassy making arrangements. Yeah. You know what? Non-participants, people who, who weren't in the trip, uh, they, they're they unaware that we hippies on the India scene took many casualties and deaths. Uh, sure, we were the original Earth People tribe. Uh, we just, just found ourselves that, and that led to Earth People and, you know, a higher domain of awareness. But... Uh, yeah, also it was an unprecedented experiment in human freedom, <laughs> as you heard about. Uh, you know, transnational camaraderie, deep love for humanity. But the dark side of the experience was heavily laden with disease, insanity, or... You just didn't make it. 